Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I'm going to propose a hypothetical scenario. Suppose the Atlanta Falcons are thinking about taking Kyle Pitts in the NFL draft. All of a sudden, Julio Jones and Matt Ryan, two of the top players on the team who have been there a really long time, tell the Falcons front office that if they draft Pitts, they'll walk out. They'll never play another game for the Falcons again. Draft Pitts, and we're done. Obviously, something like this is not going to happen, especially since I'm sure that Ryan would love to be able to throw to Pitts. So why do I bring this up? Because 40 years ago, something like this actually happened. In 1981, there was a ton of drama surrounding the New York Giants and what they were going to do with their first round pick. And it got so bad that not only did Lawrence Taylor send a message to the Giants asking the team not to draft him, but it led to a bunch of veterans on the team threatening to walk out if the Giants wound up taking LT. This is the story behind the chaotic 1981 NFL Draft and the New York Giants. Before I talk about why there was so much drama, we need some context as to how the Giants were looking heading into the 1981 NFL Draft. During the 1980 season, the Giants flat out stunk. It wasn't anything unusual, the team hadn't made the postseason since 1963, and hadn't had a winning record since 1972, but in Ray Perkins' second season at the helm, it was not pretty. Outside of a few bright spots, like a shocking upset victory over the Dallas Cowboys, and a shootout win on the road over the St. Louis Cardinals, it was a very long year as the team went 4-12, finishing with the third-worst offense and the second-worst defense in all of football. There were many reasons why the Giants were bad in 1980. Phil Simms was struggling to get things going in his second year. They had no running game, finishing second-to-last in yards per carry and in the bottom five in rushing yards. They had no run defense, finishing in the bottom three of practically every major statistical category, and they couldn't get to the quarterback at all. The Giants had just 28 sacks, which ranked in the bottom quarter of the league. In nine of their 16 games, they recorded just one sack or less. During those nine games, the Giants went one and eight. Not having a pass rush might have been the root of their problems. Entering the 1981 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints had the first pick, and it seemed like they were gonna take South Carolina running back George Rogers. If you watched the Houston Oilers under Bum Phillips and knew how much he ran Earl Campbell into the ground, you would know that this wasn't too much of a surprise. The other blue chip prospect in the class was a linebacker out of North Carolina, by the name of Lawrence Taylor. Giants general manager George Young admitted that whichever of the two players was available was going to be their pick. So people knew for a long time that Taylor was going to be swapping Carolina Blue for Giant Blue. During the 1980 season, Taylor was absolutely dominant with the Tar Heels. He was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. He was a unanimous All-American. He had 16 sacks and 22 tackles for a loss. It's not a surprise to anyone. But Taylor was an absolute stud in that final year of college. The Giants were going to take him. The only people that had a problem with that? Well, that would be the players on the Giants. All right, now it's time to address the meat of the problem. Why were the players so furious that the team was about to take Lawrence Taylor? It had nothing to do with his on-field talent, since I think they all knew that he could play. It had nothing to do with anything legally he did off the field or any off-the-field connection that he had with a player. The main reason had to do with that green thing called money and Lawrence Taylor wanted a whole lot of it. Taylor had the man widely regarded as the best agent in the business in Michael Trope. If you were a first round pick in the 1970s, odds are Trope was the one representing you, and Taylor was no exception. Taylor was looking for a three year deal worth $750,000. Do the math, that comes out to $250,000 a year. When put in the context of every other player on the Giants, that is an absurd amount of money. The highest paid player on the Giants at the time was Gary Jeter the team's first round pick from 1977. He was making $145,000. Taylor, without even playing a snap, won in more than 70% of that. One of the only good players on the team was linebacker Brad Van Pelt. He was coming off of his fifth straight Pro Bowl appearance and would eventually wind up in the Giants' ring of honor. He was making $130,000. Taylor wanted double what a five-time Pro Bowler in the prime of his career was making. And you had tons of players on the team making five figures with Taylor's salary about to blow them out of the water, all without playing a single snap. This made players on the Giants absolutely furious, and they met and voiced their frustrations to the press. The message was simple, draft Lawrence Taylor, and we walk. One player said there's no way a rookie deserves to be making more than some of us, and Van Pelt was clearly frustrated, 
saying to know that I played eight years with five straight Pro Bowls and to have a player who hasn't played one down making so much more than myself, I'll deal with it when it happens. We were two days before the draft, and at this point, it was widely publicized that the Giants teammates wanted absolutely no part of Lawrence Taylor in the organization. And naturally, that upset Lawrence Taylor. 48 hours before the draft, he sent the Giants a telegram, saying that he didn't want to be drafted by them. As he later said, I heard the talk that some of the Giants would walk out if I got a lot of money. I didn't want people to be mad at me. This is a completely different situation than what happened a year later, when Vikings running back Darren Nelson wrote a letter begging the Vikings not to draft him just because he thought Minneapolis was a boring city. You can learn more about that bizarre situation by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Taylor had a pretty justifiable reason for not wanting to play for the Giants, and that was the fact that if he did, there was going to be a mutiny. Taylor sent the telegram on Monday morning. By Monday night, amazingly enough, the issue was resolved. I don't know the specifics of what happened, but you can probably imagine the absolute fury that Perkins in the front office had with the players after this. Because on Monday night, Taylor got bombarded with a ton of phone calls from players and coaches. The message in all the calls was simple. We're sorry. There's not going to be a walkout. There was nothing to this. And we want you to be here because you're an incredible football player. And once Taylor got those messages, especially the one from Coach Perkins, the dust was settled. Taylor himself apologized, saying that sending the telegram was a mistake. And he was feeling better now that it was clear that the Giants wanted him. Two days later, the Giants made their pick in the first round of the NFL Draft. According to reports, they had two draft cards written, with one of them being for George Rogers. When Rogers got drafted, they immediately ripped up the card and handed over the Lawrence Taylor card, wasting no time whatsoever. And the rest is history. To say that Taylor is the greatest first round pick in Giants history would be an understatement. To say that Taylor is the greatest Giant of all time would be an understatement. You can make a legitimate argument that Lawrence Taylor is the greatest defender in the history of the NFL. When Bill Belichick is calling you the greatest player that he's ever coached, well, that's saying something. The accolades are absurd. Ten straight Pro Bowls to start his career off. In his first two seasons in the league, he won Defensive Player of the Year twice. He was named MVP of the league in 1986 by the Associated Press, becoming the only defender ever to receive this honor. And he helped the Giants turn things around, winning two Super Bowls. Considering how rocky the relationship started, with Taylor not wanting to be there after his teammates threatened to leave, the fact that it ended this way is nothing short of remarkable. The 1981 NFL Draft was an absolute game-changer for the Giants. One way or the other, by taking Lawrence Taylor and considering the circumstances, we knew that it was going to make an impact. Turns out, for the Giants, it made just about the best impact possible. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jarogator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help you the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.